So uh, welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Northern Colorado Regional Airport Commission um, for August 20th, 2020. With that, I call this uh, meeting to order and uh, just want to uh, acknowledge that there is uh, um, remote participation in this uh, particular meeting uh, due to COVID concerns and, and uh, um, uh, 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 measures uh, in that regard and, and will allow for public participation in this meeting. And those instructions can be found as a part of the agenda um, that's found on the uh, Northern Colorado Regional Airport um, website. And with that, uh, I'll ask for roll call. Ray Troxell. Here. Tom Fleming. Here. Darren Atterbury. Here. Kurt Bergener. Oh wait, no, he's not here, sorry. Uh, Don Overcash. Here. Jerry Stixbury. Here. We have a quorum present. Thank you. And with that, uh, we have public comment. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, public comment uh, where they can participate uh, via um, uh, Zoom. And the way to do that is through the raising the hand feature that is a part of Zoom. Um, uh, I'll ask for uh, you to do so now. Um, and you'll have three minutes to provide uh, comments to uh, uh, the commission. Um, and uh, Aaron will help, uh, uh, Sean will help monitor the, uh, the time. And uh, with that, if you would please introduce yourself with your name and general address for the record. And uh, with that, do we have anyone that's interested in, in commenting to the commission today? And Sean, if you verify, I don't see any. I don't right. see any hands up. Okay, thank you. So we'll now close the public comment portion uh, of, the, of the meeting. And with that, we move on to our consent agenda. And for our consent agenda, we have four items, which are the meeting minutes from uh, July 16th, 2020, our airport director's report for July, our financial statement for July, and an intergovernment agreement with uh, Loveland Fire and Rescue uh, for uh, airport apparatus use. And with that, um, is it, does anyone either uh, a commissioner, I'll go to the commission first. Anyone would like to pull an item from the consent agenda? And seeing none, well, uh, if, if anybody from the uh, uh, public would like to pull a consent item for the, from the consent agenda for individual consideration today. Uh, please raise your hand if you're on Zoom. And seeing none. Uh, with that, the consent calendar will stand uh, as it is. And with that, um, we now um, we now uh, are looking for um, uh, a vote, uh, basically a motion to approve our consent agenda. Is there a motion? So move, Tom Fleming. Um, thank second. you. And second, Darren. Atterbury. Darren, thank you. So we have a motion and a second to approve our consent agenda as uh, as uh, it is. And with that, uh, roll call, please. Wait, Troxel. Yes. Tom Fleming. Yes. Steve Adams. Yes. Darren Atterbury. Yes. Don Overcash. Yes. Jerry Stooksbury. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you and, and welcome, Steve. Thank and you. With that, um, any uh, uh, agenda follow up that uh, uh, commissioners or um, Jason you'd like to uh, comment on? Jason, why don't you start off? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I just had a couple of add on uh, comments for uh, the director's report. Just wanted to. Uh, uh, let everybody know at the commission that the remote tower project uh, has received the green light from the FAA to uh, uh, start uh, uh, phase one testing using the air traffic controllers that are already based here. So uh, it's been a, a little bit of an uphill struggle, but uh, we were able to get that approval. And so we're working with the controllers that are on site right now that are controlling air traffic from the mobile tower to uh, uh, begin testing and evaluating the remote tower system uh, in order to provide a lot of the um, 
information and, and critical feedback that we need to uh, enable the FAA to fully evaluate the system and move on to uh, uh, future phases where we'll be able to utilize the remote tower um, as the primary source of air traffic control at the airport. And uh, the mobile tower will then be put into a standby mode uh, in case it's needed in the future. So uh, that's very good news, something that uh, Bill Payne uh, uh, from, from CDOT Aeronautics project manager has been working closely with uh, the controllers here on site and myself on. So happy that uh, we were able to uh, persuade the FAA into allowing us to do that. And uh, uh, there's still more work to do, but uh, uh, we're actually going to be able to uh, get some things done while uh, the FAA uh, is not able to travel uh, here. In addition to the folks from Sea Ridge in Canada, obviously not being able to travel over the border. So um, we're, we're happy that uh, we're, we're gonna be able to make some progress here. Um, also wanted to uh, provide a, a brief update on the uh, uh, Martin Lind uh, Discovery Air proposal. Um, you know, we've been working on, on some discussions and evaluations and as part of the, uh, uh, the project that's gone through the city of Loveland's uh, um, uh, process for, for uh, review and site development planning. And it's reaching the end of uh, uh, getting that approval done so that we can bring that in front of the airport commission next month uh, for consideration. So happy to hear uh, that you know, we've been making progress on that front and, and that all of the site development planning and entitlement uh, uh, is nearing completion so that we can bring uh, kind of the updated products for the airport commission to consider uh, at our at our September meeting. So uh, we'll have that, and I believe it is on our planning calendar for consideration. So um, those I believe are, are the only two things that I had to add. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jason. Any other uh, commissioners want to follow up on something related to the agenda, um, or I mean the, the consent agendas with that, Darren? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, Jason, is the FAA approval newsworthy? In other words, is that something that the that Northern Colorado community would would like to hear as sort of a, a thoughtful update as the progress that we're making? Or do you feel like the community already believes it's going to happen and this is just okay? I mean, in other words, it feels to me like it's very significant news. And that ought to be, and, and I know to us at the airport it is, but it, it's uh, it feels like it's something that should be shared to the, to our to Northern Colorado. What do you think about that? I think um, I think that this is uh, kind of a, a little bit of a smaller step than going into the I guess what we had planned for back in in late April, early May uh, to start that phase one testing. So you know we can certainly share that information. Um, you know, until we know exactly what that entails and how that how far that's going to get us, it may be a little bit premature right now because we're still developing the plan. There. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I. You know. I. I think. Um, generally speaking. So if this isn't the time, I'm perfectly fine for about that, and that's why I asked you the question because I don't. I don't really know. But generally speaking, I think updates to the to our communities would be really good just to show that progress is being made, albeit slow. And there's been all kinds of, um, you know, hiccups along the way, but uh, um, I, I don't think, um, I think it's helpful to keep people up to date about what's going on. If now's not the time, I'm, I'm cool with that. I was just wondering. And Darren, I hope that we'll have more information to be able to at least share something like that uh, within the next 30 days or so. So, you know, perhaps that'll be the time when we can we can make an announcement and kind okay. of share share our plan. Okay. All right, thank you, Jason. Yeah. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, thank you, Darren, for that uh, question. And and then Jason, just related to that, um, as we progress towards uh, uh, more of uh, an ongoing operational uh, remote tower, um, when do we engage in about discussions uh, with air carriers? And are those? I think it'd be any time, but. Um, with respect to um, uh, getting an uh, air carrier in? It's a great question, uh, Mr. Chair. And, you know, we, we've been, um, um, as staff, uh, just kind of following uh, a lot of the uh, uh, COVID impacts to air carriers. And, uh, um, you know, right now, uh, air carriers aren't, aren't really in expansion mode. They're still in a little bit of retraction mode, I can tell you that uh, um, you know, based on a lot of the, the recent data that I've seen, 
you know, Colorado is, is faring uh, quite a bit better than the rest of the country uh, as it relates to air travel and uh, the industry as a whole um, is still, you know, about, uh, um, you know, 65 to 70% down from what it had experienced previously, uh, looking at uh, kind of a year over year average. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at uh, about a, you know, 55 to 60% decline here in Colorado. Uh, and, and different air carriers also are experiencing uh, a, a lot of change uh, with some of the legacy carriers that were uh, used to um, car uh, carrying business travelers, uh, seeing, seeing the steepest reductions in, in the amount of demand that they've uh, experienced. And some of the ultra low cost carriers like Allegiant that had a lower volume and frequency, uh, you know, taking less of a hit, you know, approximately 50%. So, you know, saying that um, the air carriers are still not in an expansion mode for smaller airports or new airports. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of change uh, as it relates to COVID impacts and uh, um, airlines are, are, are doing a lot of uh, uh, moving around uh, to cover their bases and to uh, you know, look at other opportunities in, in mostly bigger cities right now. So we're hopeful that, uh, you know, once we see a more uptick in, in traffic and uh, uh, you know, more of an economic recovery, as a whole and uh, uh, more folks start traveling that that'll reduce and we'll have better uh, chance at, uh, you know, figuring out where those air carriers might be wanting to go and, and maybe, maybe be able to uh, uh, talk to some of those airlines that have expressed interest to us to, you know, see when they may look at uh, uh, providing service now that we have functional air traffic control. Thank you. Anybody else from the commission? Thank you so much. And with that, uh, we now uh, move on to our regular agenda and item number five, and it's the airport master plan draft review. And our purpose today as a commission is to provide comment and, uh, and uh, uh, with the eye towards preparing uh, recommendations to the council. And uh, today's kind of our work session related to the, uh, the airport master plan and, uh, and, uh, and uh, pending and uh, the uh, uh, capture of the comments, uh, it will be coming back to us in September for approval. So with that, uh, uh, Jason, I'll let you kick it off. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, today, as, as we'd mentioned, we'll be providing the Airport Commission with a, a presentation on the draft of the Airport Master Plan update. Um, the item has been organized to allow you know, for a presentation on the highlights of the draft plan. And our intent is to give the commission time to uh, digest a lot of this material. I know, I realize it is a, a rather large document and uh, has a lot of information. Uh, we've been able to come to the airport commission periodically throughout this, uh, uh, the last uh, about 20 months now that we've been uh, involved in this project to uh, um, um, share information on some of the, the draft chapters and some of the milestones uh, in the past. And it's been a few months since we've been able to do that um, because of a, a lot of change that we've had to integrate into the, uh, uh, um, the new master plan as it relates to the implementation phase. So, you know, we've gone through a, a number of capital plan iterations. Uh, the CARES Act funding uh, changed uh, uh, our, our capital plan again. And uh, we kind of slowed up, down the process in order to fully capture the direction of the airport commission into uh, this, this document, which, uh, um, you know, this is the, you know, as I mentioned, the final draft version of it, or the, the draft version of it. And, uh, you know, we're hopeful that within about two weeks time, we'll be able to get all of the feedback from you uh, so that we can uh, incorporate those into that final document. So. Um, still, still a work in progress right now. Um, we're probably 95% complete and we're planning on putting this on the agenda next month for a final review and consideration or recommendation to the city councils for adoption. Following that, we'll present that to the city councils and uh, um, you know, these, uh, this document, uh, as with the budget and any real estate acquisitions are, are required by the uh, cities is through our intergovernmental agreement for the city councils to uh, adopt. Um, the plan, uh, just as a reminder, was paid through through four grants, which we managed from the FAA and the state totaling $490,000 approximately, and with a local share of about $50,000. So uh, um, the majority of this plan has been paid for through those, those grants. And in recent months, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we've been incorporating those big changes with the airport capital plan to integrate those changes that we've uh, uh, created as part of the CARES Act funding. 
uh, which really caused some delays. However, you know, I think that the end results will reflect a much better uh, document moving forward. Uh, public outreach obviously was a bit of a challenge with our, with our pandemic and uh, uh, staff, uh, I'm proud to say we were able to find some new ways to uh, use the virtual meeting platforms and a combination of those video and website uh, uh, information uh, op, uh, uh, availability to have kind of a, a really good successful public open house from the level of participation that we had uh, here just a couple weeks ago on August 8th. So uh, we received a, a lot of good feedback during that meeting and the FAA uh, was, was actually participating and, and uh, was more than satisfied with the approach that we took and, and implemented as part of the project, including this, uh, the final virtual public open house meeting format. We also had a few other airports participate uh, in order to watch and kind of learn how we created this uh, final open house uh, 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 outreach process. So I'd like to uh, you know, really thank the planning development subcommittee as they've been in deeply involved in kind of the technical and, and uh, detail oriented reviews. Uh, we've been getting a lot of feedback from them and that group and, and the suggestions that really helped shape this plan. Um, and, and with that, I, I didn't know if Tom, since he's on our PDSC, would, would want to say anything as part of the, uh, the PDSC's uh, uh, ongoing uh, efforts as part of the master plan. Well, thanks, Jason. Uh, never pass up an opportunity to steal a mic and make a fool of yourself. But uh, I would simply echo what you said, that uh, I think it's uh, an excellent job has been done by all parties. The uh, PDSC did indeed review this in some detail uh, with uh, Ryan and Lauren, the uh, Meet and Hunt uh, uh, team, as well as yourself. Uh, there's no way that they can replace a detailed review by this commission, but hopefully we have caught most of the things that should be of uh, concern to commission members, as well as a couple of minor technical uh, uh, corrections that we'd recommended and I believe have been adopted. Uh, again, what I would primarily say is I think uh, our contractor, Mead and Hunt, did a superb job with this. They've been very helpful in every request we've had for information or inputs or anything else. And I salute both them, Jason and the airport staff, for what they've done. That's really all I have to say. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Um, and I just uh, wanted to also express the appreciation that I have for all the stakeholders and citizens that have really actively participated in this effort and all the airport users as well, so that uh, you know we can really utilize this as a guide for airport development and land use inside the fence for the next uh, you know 10 years or more. So. Um, you know, I'll turn over the mic to Aaron now um, so that he can give a quick brief on, on some of the outreach that we've done uh, as we've gone along. Uh, but I also want to point out that, you know, this is a draft. Um, it, is, it is with flaw. We are still working on uh, a lot of changes. And because this uh, has been a, uh, a project that has kind of gone about 18 months or more, there are some chapters that we worked on in the very beginning that uh, already need updating. So we're, we're doing that and uh, we'll be incorporating some of those uh, slight updates and, and minor changes uh, into that document for, for the uh, final draft, which will be available prior to the next uh, meeting. So Aaron, go ahead and uh, take over. Great, thanks Jason. Uh, so throughout the master plan process, both cities and the airport have endeavored to provide information in a transparent fashion and to reach out to airport stakeholders to gather feedback and incorporate that into the plan. Uh, we compiled a email list of more than, well, about 850 residents, uh, airport users, business owners, members of relevant boards and commissions and other interested individuals and we sent master plan information, meeting announcements, and instructions on participation to those people. Uh, this information was also shared in local newspapers, by direct mail, on social media platforms of both cities, and the airport's uh, social media platforms. Uh, meeting announcements were also posted on notification boards in both city halls and uh, at our airport admin office. So throughout this effort, uh, all draft chapters have been posted to the master plan page on our airport website. We've also created a uh, FAQ page to, that has been updated throughout the process to provide information regarding the questions and comments we've received. Uh, airport uh, staff and the consultant team from Meet and Hunt 
I uh, have presented information and solicited feedback at over 30 public meetings, including airport commission meetings, PDSC meetings, planning commission meetings for both cities and the county. And uh, presentations were also given to uh, business and service organizations such as Rotary Club and uh, Chambers of Com Commerce. Um, so yeah, I will hand it over to Ryan Hayes, who's our project manager with Mead and Hunt to uh, summarize the details of the plan and discuss uh, some of the feedback that has been received. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Has everyone seen these slides? Yep. Yep. I'll put them in large format. Production. Still seeing them? Yep. That's good. Okay, good. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon, commissioners. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's obviously been our pleasure as the as your contractor to help with the preparation of this document and and work with your great airport staff. As Aaron mentioned, we did a lot of outreach. This is just a uh, a little bit about that outreach. We uh, we included three three public meetings. Uh, the last being conducted on August sixth via Zoom. Uh, as Aaron mentioned, we have a website. We have lots of information on the website, including frequently asked questions, draft chapters, um, and an opportunity for folks to submit comments. We, we receive comments both through the website and through the master plan uh, email address that's shown on this, on this chart. This slide uh, that Jason asked us to put together is just a little bit of a breakdown of the flavor of the comments that we received going into that last public meeting. Uh, and as you can see, the two big portions of this pie chart are airline service and terminal. So those are the top two topics that were referenced as folks uh, sent in comments. Uh, we also got quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit, bit of input on noise, which is not something we can totally control and do much about in the master plan process. Uh, but what we did in response to those noise comments is we updated our frequently asked questions document and better explained what the airport's role and responsibility and what each city's role and responsibility is uh, in relation to addressing noise complaints and dealing with noise issues. And we also explained the FAA's role in, in uh, dealing with noise. So uh, we, we updated that frequently asked questions document and we posted it on the website to uh, uh, to kind of uh, help address some of those comments and questions that we got. Uh, I've got about 15 or so other slides that walk us through the entire draft report, but feel free to stop me and ask questions. And also if you were on the August 6th uh, Zoom meeting, this will be fairly repetitive. Uh, it's, it's very similar to the presentation that uh, uh, that Jason and Aaron and I gave on August 6th. So, uh, and Ryan, yes. let me just interrupt just uh, as you were transitioning. Yes, please. Go um, ahead. I just want to let uh, those that are participating in the Zoom meeting uh, with the commission, if you have questions or comments, if you put, please put them in the chat box and that will help us address them as a part of the, uh, after your presentation. So thank okay. you, Ryan, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Troxell. Uh, so this slide is the process chart. And again, the master plan is broken into four phases. As you can see along the bottom of this phase of this chart, as Aaron mentioned, public outreach happens throughout. Uh, based on our experience in doing these master plans for airports around the country, this was a extensive outreach process. Uh, a couple more meetings than we typically do, a couple more public open houses than we typically do. Uh, but it turned out to be a very beneficial uh, outreach process. I, and I feel like the master plan is better for having done it. Um, so just to walk you through the steps of the process, the master plan begins with a detailed inventory of all things airport. So airside facilities, landside facilities, terminal facilities, airport access, land use within the airport environs, all these things make up uh, as well as an environmental uh, baseline condition inventory. All of these things make up the kind of the, uh, the foundation, if you will, that the master plan is built upon. So that's the first chapter of the master plan. We, we detail all of those facilities and we do kind of a condition assessment 
of each facility. Then we forecast aviation activity. What activity and how much demand do we anticipate is going to be placed on this airport over the course of the next 20 years? And so the primary areas that we forecast uh, in a master plan for an airport are commercial service emplanements and commercial service operations, general aviation operations, and, and based aircraft. Um, so those are, the, those are the aviation activity uh, factors that are forecast. Um, and, and this chart includes all of those forecasts. The, obviously the commercial operations forecast, uh, as Jason mentioned, are already a little bit dated. It, it depends entirely on when an airline comes back. Um, yeah, and then the general aviation forecasts obviously are also uh, down a little bit and not not hitting the mark uh, due to the pandemic, but um, it, it, it's still valid information. We still expect all that demand to be placed on the Northern Colorado Regional Airport uh, as folks return to flying and passengers return to the airlines. We take all of that forecast information, we ask the FAA to officially bless it and approve it, which uh, we were successful with. And then we determine what facilities are required to meet all of that forecast demand. So the next chapter is entitled facility requirements. We start with an analysis of the critical aircraft for each runway at the airport. Uh, and that lays out the FAA design standards that we need to meet. We look for areas where the airport doesn't meet FAA design standards and we determine projects that are applicable to, uh, to, to bring the airport into compliance. For the most part, this airport is very compliant with FAA uh, design standards. Uh, it's been very well managed for a number of years. Uh, this is a, these are some of the safety areas and setbacks rel relative to each runway. Uh, as you can see, and, and the airport boundary is shown in a white line on this chart. Um, each of the two runways at the airport service different types and sizes of aircraft, so they are based, they have different design standards, different setbacks and safety requirements according to the FAA. This next slide, uh, we added this to both the, uh, to this presentation as well as the August 6th Zoom presentation to the public because we got some comments from airport users about, uh, about airfield capacity and also about uh, runway 624 and the wind coverage of that runway. So first, the airport is currently operating at about 46% of its annual service volume. So it's at about 46% of capacity. The FAA recommends once you get to 60% uh, of capacity, you should be planning for additional runways. Once you get to 80% of your annual service volume, you should be building additional runway capacity to accommodate that demand. So the annual service volume of the Northern Colorado Regional Airport is about 200,000 annual operations. Again, an operation being a takeoff or a landing. So a touch and go is actually two operations. Uh, and what all this means is in this master plan, we need to be planning for additional runway capacity at this airport, but the forecast don't show us needing that additional runway within the 20 year planning period. So we, in other words, we continue to show it on the ALP and we continue to plan and reserve the space for that facility, but it's not likely to be needed to be built unless operations increase uh, much faster than we forecast them to. The second part of this chart, we talk about wind analysis. The wind coverage of the primary runway, runway 1533 is very good at this airport. Uh, in fact, it exceeds 95%, which is the FAA's threshold for a crosswind runway. So technically, the Northern Colorado Regional Airport does not need a crosswind runway for wind coverage purposes. That said, there are times when the winds are east-west and uh, runway 624 certainly provides a benefit, particularly to small aircraft uh, during those circumstances. Excuse me, could you? Yes. Back up and just go over that wind chart. I, I understand what you're saying in terms of the need. I don't understand the yes. data. What's 10 and a half knots, 13 knots, 16 knots? What does that represent? Absolutely. Great wind, question. Wind. Those are uh, crosswind components. So okay. that's the amount of crosswind that is hitting the runway at a, essentially at a, a 90 degree angle. And, and uh, so, 
the higher crosswind coverage is applicable to larger aircraft, the smaller crosswind coverage, 10.5 knots, is more applicable to smaller aircraft. Um, but it's said differently, on um, the main runway, 98.9% .9 of the time, the crosswind component is 16 knots or less. Is that yes, true? That okay, is true. great. Thank you. That is true. Yep. Thanks, Jerry. Um, so a, a couple other components of this facility requirements chapter are land side facilities, general aviation hangars, apron space, uh, the remote control uh, tower facilities, non-aeronautical facilities, airport access, vehicle parking, all of these things. We quantify the requirements for all of these facilities, again, based on the forecast demand. And we do the same thing with the passenger terminal. So. We have, an, we have a forecast of both employments, uh, passengers getting on and boarding an aircraft, as well as a forecast of commercial operations. And both of those, and a forecast of a peak hour, when, when is the busiest hour that the terminal is expected to accommodate and how many passengers will it have to accommodate. All that translates into this table on this chart, which is essentially a square footage program uh, for the uh, for the future passenger terminal. So we're, we're recommending about a 30,000 square foot terminal, approximately two gates and space to accommodate two air carriers is the, uh, the passenger terminal uh, recommendation of the master plan. The next chapter of the master plan is entitled alternatives. So now that we know what facilities are needed to uh, accommodate the demand and how big those facilities need to be. Now it's time to look at some alternative ways to uh, to provide those facilities on the airfield um, and lay out the airfield. Uh, so we, we include at the beginning of this chapter a, an exhaustive list of goals. What goals are we trying to accommodate with these alternatives? Obviously we want to incorporate the, all the good work that went into the strategic plan for uh, Northern Colorado Regional Airport and, and the, uh, the work that the commission did to prepare that. We want to incorporate those goals uh, such as facilitating a center for in innovation and encouraging private and public investment and compatible land use. All of these, uh, I won't go through the entire list, but it's an important list. Uh, and again, this is the beginning of the alternatives chapter that describes these goals. Then we also talk about some assumptions that we're going to carry into the alternatives. Uh, assumptions like we need to accommodate the remote tower requirements, which come with a couple of masts with cameras. We want to make sure those uh, we aren't developing facilities that require those tower masts to be moved. Uh, we want to accommodate all the terminal building requirements and passenger requirements, the continued use of runway 624, uh, these are all assumptions that get carried into the alternatives and then we develop um, uh, we develop both airfield alternatives landside alternatives and terminal alternatives um, based on that information uh, then in that chapter we recommend a preferred alternative our, our airfield recommendations are shown on this chart or this map uh, the two primary runways uh, existing where they are today with a planned extension and widening to runway 1533. Uh, I mentioned that additional runway capacity that's being provided on the plan via a parallel runway to the, on the west side of the airfield, parallel to runway 1533. Um, and then these trapezoidal shape runway protection zones off each end of the runway are essentially uh, areas that we're trying to maintain compatible land use uh, and accommodate the approach requirements of each uh, of each runway facility. On the terminal side, we included a couple of alternatives, both a one story concept, a functional concept of a terminal, as well as a two story concept. And we show the floor plans uh, with the various spaces, again, matching our square footage recommendations from the previous chapter. It's not to say that this is how the terminal is going to get built or this is what it's going to look like when it does get designed uh, by, your, uh, by your selected architect, but this is a functional way to lay out a single story terminal uh, with passengers entering and 
either going directly into the uh, TSA checkpoint queue or moving to the right to check bags and check in with the airline, then passing through TSA into the secure hold room. Uh, when passengers arrive, they enter through these gates and um, exit through the secure exit and move to baggage claim and car rentals. And it's just, it's a very simple kind of standard single story layout uh, for a terminal. Uh, just to give the reader of the master plan some idea of what might be built uh, to accommodate commercial service at this airport. Once we complete the alternatives phase, we, we put all those preferred alternatives onto one sheet of paper, which we refer to as the, con the conceptual development plan uh, for the airport. So this, again, this is one sheet of paper that shows all existing facilities and planned future facilities at the Northern Colorado Regional Airport. Uh, we also show uh, on the west side of the air airfield, uh, the Northern Colorado Law Enforcement Training Center that's currently under construction, uh, as well as how much acreage is available for either aeronautical or non-aeronautical development on that side of the airfield, and some potential ways to lay out uh, general aviation hangar storage, and, as well as the passenger terminal area. Uh, all on this one drawing. Then we continue with the implementation phase of the master plan and we develop a capital project list, cost estimates for each of those projects, uh, and then we do a financial analysis on how we think the airport could best pay for all of these projects. So you'll notice this is a big number, uh, $230 million uh, of projects included in the 20 year plan. This is the escalated number. The unescalated number in 2020 dollars is about 175 million, uh, but still uh, a lot of high costs, a lot of projects that uh, are likely to be needed in the next 20 years. We, we show the sources of capital funding on the left side of this chart, uh, including FAA grants, the CARES Act that Jason mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, uh, state grants, passenger facility charges. All of these are, are options for funding this capital program. And what we try to do is align the funding, sources of capital funding with the project needs uh, and the good news is we've got the entire short-term plan funded completely. There are some projects in the midterm and long-term that uh, are kind of what I like to refer to as over-planning. We're planning for some projects like a terminal uh, expansion and a parking lot expansion and a loop road expansion that may, may be needed in the next 20 years. They may not be needed. We're, uh, we're including them on the on the capital plan for this airport so that we reserve space, uh, but uh, we don't exactly have a funding plan for some of those projects in the midterm and long-term phase. But the vast majority of the $230 million worth of projects we have identified funding for. We include a phasing plan at the end of the master plan that shows where all of these projects are and which projects are in which phase, the short-term phase being the first five years. Uh, and shown in green on this, on this map. Most of the first five years is related to the primary runway, the primary taxiway, and the terminal building and projects to facilitate the return of commercial service. Uh, the medium term phase is the six to 10 year phase of projects shown in purple on this map. Uh, and this is where I mentioned some of those projects to either expand the terminal or expand the commercial parking apron or the vehicle parking lot uh, that may or may not be needed. It just depends on the, um, the success of commercial service when it does return. And then phase C being the long-term list of projects shown in blue on this map. This is the 11 to 20 year phase uh, projects. The one other thing I wanted to mention, and we did talk about this in detail during the uh, August 6th virtual open house is uh, we included an analysis of the airport influence area and particularly all the undeveloped land within the airport influence area as an appendix to this master plan. All this information is included in appendix B. Um, 
I believe you all have, have read some of this or most of this in the past. And, and again, it's included as Appendix B in the master plan. What we're trying to do is identify how much undeveloped land there is within the airport influence area. Uh, and as Jason mentioned, some of this, some development has occurred since we produced this appendix. Uh, but at that time, there only about a quarter of the land developed within the airport influence area was, or a quarter of the total land in the area was developed. Uh, so the airport cares about this in that we want all of this undeveloped land to be developed with land uses that are compatible with airport operations. And, and so the airport influence area analysis makes recommendations for um, land uses that may be more compatible with, uh, with the airport and less residential development, uh, hopefully within the airport influence area. Uh, so that's the that's my entire presentation. Jason mentioned a little bit about the final steps for the master plan. Really, what we need to do is incorporate the public comments, incorporate commission comments and PDSC comments to the draft report. Uh, and then we need an airport commission recommendation to the city council. So we're looking for the commission to recommend to the city councils to adopt this master plan. Um, potentially do a joint city council information session if we want to uh, share additional information before the city councils uh, officially adopt and bless this master plan and then we produce the final report. Uh, so with that, happy, you, happy National Thank Aviation Day. I, it was actually yesterday, but um, it was close enough that I thought I'd put it on my final slide. <laughs> we'll count it, so appreciate that. <laughs> And with that, uh, any questions? I don't see any questions yet in the chat box, so we'll go right to the commissioners. I have one, please, Mr. Chair. You bet. Uh, Ryan, in your uh, funding projections that are looking several years out, does that also reflect the uh, uh, resumption of commercial air service and the associated costs and expenses that go with that? It does, uh, Commissioner Fleming, and that's a good question. And it, uh, so our, we have to make some assumptions because commercial service has not, is not back, but because it was at this airport in the past, Jason has a pretty good handle on what the expenses are gonna be when they return. Uh, one thing, we, one comment we got from the PDSC that we are in, uh, in the process of updating is uh, considering the additional staff requirements and making sure that those are accounted for in our uh, operations and maintenance expense projections. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. You, I think. Oh, Jason? I think Tom's talking. I, he's on mute, though. Oh, Tom? We can't hear I'm you. I'm sorry. I just wanted to note that uh, we've also, in the PDSC and uh, the airport staff, have been working with the Loveland HR uh, regarding increased staff allotments uh, associated with the pr potential return of commercial service. So it's not something the airport is unaware of, uh, and I'm sure that provides some data for Ryan to include in his analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah. Uh, Steve? Uh, uh, no, Jerry first and then Steve. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, following up on what um, Tom just said, and then also what you said at the very beginning of the meeting, I, I watched the Zoom um, version of the August 6th um, open house. And great job there, for sure. And thanks for posting it on the website. But I believe in that um, presentation, you were talking about some of the assumptions for the air carrier service were based on it returning later this year or early next. And I just continue to caution everyone, and, and Mr. Chairman, your comments were the same about, well, now that we have a remote tower, how soon do we get an airline? I think we need to take a really hard look at what the industry forecasts are and, and bake those into this plan solidly so that when we're presenting it to the city councils, it is it looks very conservative based on, you know, for example, American Airlines today they announced that starting October 1, they're cutting service to 15 or 18 regional airports 
like Shreveport, Louisiana, Roswell, New Mexico, and, and it goes just along the lines of what Jason was said earlier, that things are still a bit in free fall there. And um, I, I, I don't want to have it looking like we're thinking things are going to happen next year that, that are highly likely not to happen. No, thanks. Um, and I'll, I'll kick in there too. Um, I saw where uh, Cheyenne's airport um, just added a commuter uh, to Denver. Um, and I believe another one did. Was it Colorado Springs or, um, but anyway, um, in the last two days, I've participated in an FAA UAS uh, uh, conference. And um, it, it, my question relates to um, emerging air transportation systems that, you know, um, that might be a replacement, might be an alternative, might be, um, might be a complement to uh, um, current air traffic. And, but um, it, it, that's, that hasn't slowed down during COVID. In fact, it's increased. Um, and then, so I'm relating particularly to uh, urban air uh, mobility systems. Where does the airport play in that? Does it play in terms of its land use or does it play in terms of its air traffic control? Um, and so my question isn't, whose crystal ball is, uh, uh, has the clarity, but I think, um, and to Jerry's point, uh, I, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of change in this industry. So, um, you know, I think a master plan, uh, you know, um, I think it reflects the past and the present um, and where we're going generally um, in the future. But how, how would you address um, how well are we positioned for um, where we are in um, in in uh, um, transportation systems at this time as it relates to um, the airport? Well, th thank you, Mr. Troxell. I would uh, I'll try this and let Jason uh, fill in, but the, the advantage that I see this airport having is a lot of undeveloped property that can be developed in a way that is, uh, that facilitates some of these emerging technologies such as urban air mobility or, or whatever it is, there, there is space available within the airport's property line that can and this, this property can be developed specifically for those land uses. And there's lots of good access points to every uh, piece of developable property, both on the west side uh, and the east side. So um, I think the airport is well positioned to take advantage and, and uh, pivot to whatever the changes in the industry uh, materialize. Yeah, I think that's, a, you know, I think that's a good response and, and also recognition of some advantages we have. Um, and then also related to um, Cheyenne's airport um, or Warren, um, you know, the contract appears to be uh, given to Warren with respect to the, um, uh, the updating of the, of the missile system. And I think a conversation I had with you, Jerry, in the bus on that trip was, <clears throat> Um, and also talking to the mayor of uh, Cheyenne, that she viewed Northern Colorado as critical to the success of, of that huge contract that, um, that looks like it's uh, uh, coming to Warren. And so that means, uh, 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 I, I forget, it's, it's in the high billions of, of, but that would be a lot of uh, aircraft and, and perhaps aircraft going to all the missile silos on a daily basis for whatever their retrofit um, uh, uh, do, uh, mission is and so forth. So um, uh, it, it, I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting off this topic of the master plan, but it's related to, um, I think it's, um, uh, as we look at uh, air transportation, uh, generally it, it might be in a funk, but in terms of locally, there's probably some uh, incredible opportunities and how we view that as it relates to this airport in northern Colorado. So um, any, yeah, anyway, I don't think that's a, looking for a comment or a, it's not so much a question other than um, 
you know, there's a lot of things going on that uh, um, I think will directly uh, impact the surplus. Other commissioners? Um, wait. Steve, uh, Steve, go ahead, then Darren. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I've already um, spoken some to uh, Jason about the master plan and, and, um, and he's already made some comments. I think the uh, planning group has already kind of identified some of these things too as well, but it seems like in the first uh, few chapters of the report, as it's presented now, there really is no mention of COVID-19 until the financial analysis in the last chapter, chapter seven. So uh, as we've all talked about the uh, paradigm shifting of COVID and the long-term trajectory of what we think there, plus as been pointed out, the other alternatives, um, I, I just uh, had some comments noted there. And then I, I wanted to ask Jason this question because I've already got my notebook full of stickies. How does, uh, how does the uh, committee, uh, the subcommittee or, or Jason want our comments returned to them? Can we is there, and, and when is that deadline for that, so. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we're, we're hoping for two weeks from today. So that would be uh, Thursday, September 3rd. Um, and, you know, if, uh, if you have any, any written comments that you'd like to share, uh, certainly do so via email. Um, we actually do have a specific email address uh, um, and Sean can share that with everybody. Um, she'll send that out to everybody. You can send it to any one of us as well. Uh, directly, that's not a problem. But uh, if you have it in written format, uh, um, you know, and, and I've done that myself going through the, the, the booklet uh, page for page and uh, uh, up, updating uh, or, or circling some of the things that, that we'll need to update or change um, um, so that we can get that over to Ryan and his team to in, incorporate into the, the final uh, version of this that will be uh, made available at our next meeting. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah, thank and you, let Steve. us know we can pick it up and or you can drop it off if, if you'd like. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Steve, I can swing by and pick that up on my way to work one of these days. Oh, okay. Thanks, sir. Appreciate yep. that. Thank you. Um, uh, Darren? Yeah, Aaron, Steve's been working out of Barbados, so um, you, that's just a, that's just an electronic backdrop. Don't be don't be fooled. About that. <laughs> Pretty crafty. Um, um, and and maybe the, or uh, wait, this might be a maybe later in the discussion. But one of the things I want to talk about is process. Um, sort of as we go through the councils, um, Steve Adams and I talked yesterday. And one of the things I know that you've you've expressed um, the opportunity for the two councils to get together, and I'm not sure you and I haven't had a chance to talk before this meeting, but I'm not sure if this is the topic that you're thinking that we might want to come together and talk through and other related airport kinds of topics. There's a lot going on, so so um, if you want to take more substantive content comments about master plan, then come back to this. I'm happy to do that, but. I I, um, I just wanted to sort of pose the question and then talk more about the process. Yeah, I think process is very appropriate now because it's I think it's how do we uh, take it to the councils as well and that might uh, and that, that's appropriate right now if you'd like. Okay, it's is if I can um, and I'm sorry, Wade. You and I, you know, we usually talk that's before it. these meetings. We didn't this time. Um, as Steve and I were talking, I know um, you know pre pre-behavioral health um, we of, I mean, the county mental health facility, excuse me. I, I don't mean- You're in Spanish. Let, yeah, let, me, let me back up because Steve Adams is going to not help in this. Um, we, we, we know we had some conversations that we wanted to have with the city of Loveland and likewise, and we were talking about a possibility of a joint meeting. Um, that issue, the county issue is behind us at this point. And um, Steve and I were talking still about bringing the two boards together. And I know, uh, Mayor, you, you had expressed some interest to that to Jason. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm wondering, um, and maybe Jason to bring you in, I'm assuming that this is one of the topics that, that uh, he's wanted to have jointly with our councils. Um, 
That wouldn't be an adoption process. Clearly, that would be a work session kind of uh, opportunity. Um, and then I know there's certainly uh, some of the FAA and COVID funding, there's, there's going to be interest in what we're doing with the terminal and those dollars. And then I also know of an update regarding the um, sort of the virtual tower would be, would be something as well. Um, is that something, Jason, that you think we can pull off in a, in a, um, in a time frame that could add, um, that could add feedback for you for this master planning process? And Wade, was that what you, what you were thinking? Yes. Okay. So Jason, if we were to take this away, if Steve and I were to take this away and try and schedule this with our councils, what would be the time frame that would be most helpful to you and and Ryan um, in terms of giving you know feedback into this into this process? Thanks, Darren. Um, you know we um, obviously will have the uh, kind of final draft for the airport commission to uh, take action on for a recommendation at our next meeting. So in a month from now. Uh, which means that we'll be kind of uh, you know late September and October before we could uh, uh, consider um, organizing a uh, presentation for the, that final document for the city council to consider. Well, so let me just and I, that's great. Um, another option might be in Steve and and um, Loveland and Mayor. I'd ask you: um, Is there value in bringing to bringing it to them? Um, and presenting not as a final document, but in a work in progress and see if there's feedback rather than waiting till the end of the process through the adoption process. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually thinking out loud, so I'm not sure what's the I, best. I think that's a good suggestion. And particularly if there are strong feelings from one council or both councils, if it's after it's adopted, that's uh, different than if it was in part of the prior to adoption. Well, and, and there is value in getting that feedback earlier because if we wait through the adoption process, I mean, we would cl we would clearly need to have this before the adoption process, but yep. to me, it feels it's always harder when you get that feedback at the very tail end. It's frustrating for our elected officials and it's hard for us to, to respond to that as staff. Steve, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, thanks, Darren. I, I do, and my first thought is to kind of maybe uh, ask our mayor pro tem to join in the conversation about this as far as thinking uh, as to the council's uh, uh, ability to uh, uh, an interest in, in participating in this process. I think I agree that it should be done before it's finalized versus after. Uh, I don't think, I think both councils aren't ones that like faint accompli kind of uh, presentations. I think they would rather feel like they're in the trenches during the drafting process as opposed to just being presented something in a final without being able to really want to make comments on it. But um, I don't know if uh, uh, Commissioner Overcash might have some comments on this too as well. I think, uh, thank you, um, City Manager Adams. I really don't, um, I think it's a disadvantage not, uh, I think it a disadvantage to, uh, showing it afterwards. I think it's best to be able to go through upfront. I, I would not expect any serious adjustments or claims, but it's um, people do like to be involved upfront and there's some experience there with it within each council. And I think that would be a good move on our part. Not wanting to delay the process, but, and I don't think they will get overly deep in the detail. Most of the councils, at least the councilors in Loveland, I know are, all committed to various projects that they're already working on and kind of up to their eyeballs with the COVID and everything. But I think yeah. uh, not bringing it to them in front, up front um, can often create problems down the road that we, we, can, we don't have to deal with. We can avoid them. Yeah, the only, only if I'm timing just, uh, the other comment I would add on that process is just uh, is the thought about trying to set up a joint meeting. Yeah because I know uh, our, our normal schedule of, of meetings is pretty full because we're in the middle of our budget process mm -hmm. and, and some other things. So uh, again, making sure that timing is appropriate might have to have it on another day besides a Tuesday if we're trying to get our councils together. 
uh, unless there's a joint uh, Tuesday that would be open to both of us that we could use for that purpose. Right. I'd like to add, I think where counselors are uh, really want to comment and are curious of how we're going to maximize the value of the airport over the next five to 10 years. Um, they're going to ask the same question citizens brought up regarding uh, air service and terminal and how can we use the airport as an economic development tool? Uh, how can it uh, support us in our efforts to attract primary employers? I think those are the areas counselors are going to be interested in. Of course, then they're going to tie in, well, how is, is the airport built for that? What can we handle? So the two things really tie together quite well. You know, the master plan to make sure we can accommodate the growth. But I think they're really going to be interested in the uh, development efforts as far as the activity, which is where the real value comes to our communities. So why, I, um, what about Steve and I and Jason um, looking for dates? And Steve, your challenges scheduling-wise are going to be the same as ours of the council. Mm -hmm. The council's, you know, they're becoming full-time jobs, and we need to be intentional that that doesn't happen for for, the, for these mostly volunteers, right? So, so if it'd be okay, uh, Commissioner Overcash and Chair Troxel. Um, why don't we work on seeing if we can, and, and wait, I'll bring this to the leadership planning team on Monday morning yep. and look for some dates. And Jason, it'd be good to have you be involved in that as well. But um, it sounds like we've got some agreement maybe on, the, on that process. So um, are you okay with what we're talking about, Jason? Yeah, Darren, I think, uh, you know, our intent was to have some kind of study session and feedback uh, um, um, and then, you know, put it on a future agenda for, for both city councils to consider for adoption. So, you know, certainly it wasn't our intent to give an approval right away. It was uh, okay. going to be that last step that we need to yeah. make sure that we have everything the way that uh, um, everybody feels as though it needs to be. Okay, thanks. No, I think that's a good discussion. Any other comments on that? Um, Mr. Chair, if I could add one last comment there. I, I do sure. think it would be important to have this next version of the draft updated before we would have it reviewed by our two councils. I think there's a lot of information and things that just from what I've reviewed so far that I think everybody's working on. I think that 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 version would be a good version to use for the discussion, which would put us out a little ways in the process into September, October, so. Okay, and I'm kind of where Don is, you know, I think the, the council questions are, will be kind of specific and, uh, but, uh, and we need to address those. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure the extensiveness uh, where the document is in terms of any modifications, but, you know, I think we can, um, I, I don't know, um, I'm kind of with Don too, not to press it, put it out too far into the future either. So, yeah, that's right. you know, so it's a, it, it's a balance like most things. And, and, uh, but I think it's, I, I agree that uh, going to the councils uh, prior to final adoption will be a good move. Okay. Any other comments related to uh, uh, the master plan? I think it's really coming together. Um, I think it's exciting. I think it plays to, a lot of the discussions we've had over the last few years, um, economic development uh, to uh, Commissioner Overcash, I think has been a key aspect. And that's where I think we're thinking broader than just inside the fence, but the uh, developable area, I think that's uh, uh, an important part of it. I think, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the balance between uh, expansion, uh, but also um, uh, being able to uh, uh, secure some uh, Air services uh, um, uh, rather soon, and 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 uh, you know the aspects always related to airports, uh, noise and and uh, um, and siting and and the land use around it, all those things. I um, and then also really thinking through the partnership with the FAA and the funding mechanisms, and and I agree with uh, Ryan in the presentation that you know we don't have to answer all the funding questions. I think. Um, um, this is more than just a build it and they will come. Basically, uh, I think we have a crit critical facility here that will be vital to Northern Colorado. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and we're positioning it in that fashion. And, and with that, there will be 
uh, uh, I think the uh, plan will uh, be followed by um, the investment to, uh, to help make it happen from, from various sources. So I'm excited where it is and um, excited for uh, taking it to our councils and then uh, getting it adopted by the commission. So thank you for that on, on this item. Are we ready to move on? Okay, our next item is uh, the 2021 um, uh, draft budget and rates and fees. Um, and like the last item, we're looking for uh, commission comments and, and uh, as we prepare for the recommendations to our council with regards to the budget. Um, Jason? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, annual budget for next year has been drafted by staff in, in a similar format that we've done in the previous years, as uh, uh, the chair has mentioned, is the, the goal to really share this information with you right now and answer any questions uh, that we have between now and the next meeting where it will be placed on consent uh, to act upon by the commission uh, or, or the regular agenda, depending on uh, how much uh, feedback we receive. And then uh, at that point, we'll be recommending the budget to the city councils for approval as part of their regular budget processes. So uh, as part of the intergovernmental agreement uh, that you know, also bodes through with the airport master plan, the airport budget is also uh, something that requires the city council's uh, uh, approval and appropriation. Within the budget, uh, I believe the uh, first page is on page 60 in your packet. Uh, it includes uh, not only the budget, but also the rates and fees that are adjusted uh, annually uh, in line with uh, changes to the consumer price index for the area. Um, the budget's been formatted. Um, so if you look at, uh, I believe it's page 68 and uh, I'll share my screen just so everybody can see where I'm at. So let me juggle my computers here, do that for the purpose of The right one, is it? Here it is. Can everybody see uh, it's the same page 62 there? Sean, are you able to see that? I can't. I can't hear you. You're, you're Sorry. good, Jason. Yes, it's yes, I can see that. <laughs> Super. Just making sure I'm on the right page here. It's not, um, you just need to expand it though. Zoom in. There you go. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. So um, the the budget uh, formatted how the airport commission reviews the uh, uh, financials each month, as well as the uh, uh, consolidated annual financial report or CAFR that we receive as part of the annual uh, uh, audit. The total proposed budget this year is just over seven million dollars, seven million ten thousand and four hundred thirty six dollars. Uh, 1.45 or 1.44 of that is going to uh, uh, operational expenses. 5.56 million going to the capital expenditure side. And of that $5.56 million, $1 million is being appropriated to the airport commission discre discretionary special projects account, uh, which had historically been $500,000 in previous years. This fund is what allows the airport commission to uh, have latitude to spend money on special projects and being appropriated by the city council. So we will see that here at the bottom, but that is also included in this capital contributions amount. So uh, when you're, when you're, or I'm sorry, the, uh, it's not part of this uh, uh, capital contributions amount, it's actually separated. So you know, you'll see that as, a, as an additional, but it is part of the total, the total budget. Um, we do have operating revenues and uh, operating expenses here. Um, when we go into the expenditures, uh, I just kind of went through that. The uh, revenues show uh, a little bit more in, in funding. So when you, when you factor in the total airport generated revenues here of 1.29 million approximately, derived from all of our rents, leases, and fuel flowage fees at the airport, in addition to uh, uh, other fees that that are collected, that amounts to uh, what we've what we've uh, uh, shown at that 1.28 million dollars, and then we also have down here the capital contributions amount, and that capital contributions amount has to do a lot with the funding that we're receiving, 
or anticipating to receive from a lot of various sources, including CARES Act grants and Federal Aviation Administration grants through the Airport Improvement Program. The Total of $6.487 million is uh, um, $2 million coming from the CARES Act operating funding, $1.3 million for the terminal design derived from the CARES Act as well. And the remaining $3 million is anticipated for the apron expansion construction project and also the state's uh, grant matches of $150,000. The project's allocations uh, you know, that you're seeing is part of that, that round number there, uh, not so round number, 6.487 million is uh, our projects and, and allocations that have been acted upon and approved by the airport commission. So um, just wanna point out that the total revenues do exceed the expenses uh, right now. And that's really due to that extra $2 million that we're anticipating for CARES Act funding for operations, and it's been uh, added to that, that total amount. Uh, um, so whatever is not utilized will be rolled over in the future, future years, and that's really the primary reason for the income exceeding the expenses. Moving on to the rates and fees. Hey, Jason, um, just a quick question on that. Is that because it's cost reimbursable, and so you can't yeah. show it now? That's correct, uh, Mayor. It is uh, all reimbursable. All the federal and state grants are, are based on reimbursement. In addition to that, um, I wanted to point out the reserve appropriation. Uh, I did recommend bumping that up to $1 million this year, um, up from the 500,000 that it had been previously. And that's based on formula within the intergovernmental agreement, which uh, uh, requires it to be uh, no more than 25% of the budget or 50% of our reserves. Uh, which uh, that does not exceed either. Uh, and it also allows for the cash flow purposes for those reimbursements that we need for, for these grant funded projects. So all in all, if you're looking at the operating revenues and expenses, well, we do show about a 6% uh, increase in operating revenues and about a 10% increase in operating expenses. A lot of that due to uh, the increased cost for some of these capital projects, uh, uh, some of the COVID impacts and uh, additional uh, hangars that have been acquired by the airport this year that will uh, uh, re need some maintenance and, and some upkeep and some investment to uh, um, allow for them to continue being operated. So going on to the, the rates and fees, um, you know, there's really only two areas that, uh, that we're showing recommended uh, increases and these increases, as I mentioned, are are done with, uh, uh, as we've done in prior years, using the uh, consumer price index data. Uh, land leases are, are adjusted each year and hangers every two years. So every odd year, hangers are, are increased. So we do have uh, these three, um, uh, A, B, and C row that are being increased uh, between 10 and $13, uh, I believe, from, from the year previously. So uh, A row, $10 more a month and the C row being uh, $13 a month more uh, in, in line with the CPI. Um, and you can kind of see on this final page, the difference between 2020 and 2021 in those highlighted areas. Uh, we're also um, planning for uh, in 2021 to conduct a rates and fees study that's done every five years uh, to validate some of the other rates and fees that we currently charge. And uh, uh, most likely next year we'll, we'll uh, uh, have that study conducted and then in 2022 um, adjust our, our rates and fees as, as, uh, as needed as part of that uh, rates and fees um, analysis that's conducted. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, uh, I'll put it back to the budget sheet if, if uh, that's helpful for everyone. Thank you very much, Jason. And as I've mentioned, if, uh, if, if you're viewing, please uh, put any questions that you might have in the uh, in the chat box. And with that, any commissioners want to kick off? Tom, please. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, Jason, I have two questions. First of all, you referred to the $2 million uh, allocation out of the CARES funding. Um, and I thought you said it was included and kept our budget balanced or in the black now, but I don't see it. Is, is that actually correct? Is that any portion of that 2 million included in the 21 budget? 
Tom, we do include it as part of the capital contributions. So even though it's uh, operational based, we, we uh, because it's a federal grant, we we historically put it into that capital contributions uh, line item. Uh, however, we do break it out in our in our uh, accounting software. So you know, of that six million four hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars, there is two million dollars uh, that's that's included in that. Okay, thanks. I, I, that's kind of what I thought you said, but I wasn't certain since I didn't consider it a capital expense. The second question deals with the uh, operating revenues and whether or not our COVID um, re reaction is included, such as lease abatement or reduced flying operations, particularly from the business community, and, and if that is reflected in your assumptions for next year's budget. We um, we attempted to to try and you know look at what we have now and you know there's a lot of variable factors in in trying to uh, you know determine what our fuel uh, specific uh, revenues would be and that's just based on the simple fact that um, not only do we have to uh, account for fuel volumes but we also have to account for the price of fuel as well because it is a percentage based. Uh, um, uh, amount that we receive through the uh, uh, reimbursement of, of uh, fuel taxes and uh, the commissions that are generated on the airport. So, you know, we, we did reduce those approximately 9% to uh, account for what we anticipate for not only um, maybe a slight reduction in, in fuel flowage, but also, uh, um, you know, the uh, historical here, you know, reduced fuel costs as well. But uh, you know, those, as we all know, fluctuate. So that's kind of our best guess. Um, we did we did uh, reflect some of the lease amounts um, as it relates to the uh, the land leases um, being adjusted. So you know those land leases were adjusted only four percent up, even though we are anticipating some uh, um, a little bit more than that if if COVID hadn't happened. So we did our best to uh, to really account for what we what we thought might happen as a result of uh, uh, some of those. Uh, deferments and, and everything else. However, you know, we do have uh, right now uh, only two uh, companies that are that are deferring uh, uh, land leases on their on their uh, either hangars or, or their projects. So um, yeah, that doesn't amount to a whole lot right now, but it could uh, it could could turn around next year. We just don't know. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Other commissioners? Budget? Yeah. Darren? Yeah, um, actually, Tom just, or Jason, you just answered one of my questions, and it's um, specifically about about lease revenue, and we heard from businesses on the airport of challenges and meeting rent payments and so forth. Um, and I, I heard you say we've had two request deferrals, is that right? We've had three, uh, Darren, total, but we've had one already repay uh, completely, and they're, they're back into... Uh, um, you know, having having everything up to date. So we only have two right now that are that are using that uh, uh, commission in active business assistance program. Okay. Um, so to the to the hangar rates and a modest increase, Jason. What what do you think that the leaseholders? Uh, what's the message from the airport every year as uh, relating to their hangar um, lease rates? Do they, do you have a general sort of policy or approach communication that, you know, these are primarily around CPI? Um, so uh, I guess what I'm wondering is, you know, are there any surprises for any of these folks? And, um, uh, you know, just sort of what's the expectation? Um, and I'm sure it's written into the into the leases, but can you just speak to that real quickly? And and then I've got a, a one more question. Sure, Darren. Um, yes. Yeah, so to answer that, all of our all of our standard leases uh, for both land and and uh, uh, everything else are tied to CPI. So uh, uh, historically, you know, that's always been the case um, at the airport. Okay. And, uh, you know, the, the hangers are just adjusted every two years instead of annually. So that's, uh, you know, okay. we've been just historically using that same format. Okay. And then, and then to um, city contributions, um, um, 
you know, this is really related to the police training facilities at this point, right? That's correct. Yes. So the city contributions are no longer being captured under the non-operating revenues. And oh. as you notice there, you know, under the land lease is where the police training campus falls under. Yeah. So, so Jason, I wonder, maybe what I'm asking is sort of a labeling question. Mm -hmm. It says, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you moved that. I appreciate that. I'm not sure I would title it um, from this point forward, um, city contributions. Um, is it is it appropriate to call it uh, you know police training facility lease payments or I don't want to split hairs but but isn't that more transparent? Well, um, you know what we've done is taken the city contributions in this line here and and put them into our land lease um, since it converted into a land lease. But if you think we should um, you know break that out, we certainly can. We're just trying to. You know, we have a lot more with our budget as far as detail, obviously. Uh, this has been uh, really consolidated for the purpose. Yeah, fair enough. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking if someone is looking at this document at a high level, um, city contributions one day, uh, you know, yesterday meant a lot. And lease, it's, it's, a, it's a different relationship. So I, I guess I'll just... Um, I don't need an answer for that. I'm comfortable keeping it as is, but if if someone were to look at this at a high level, more generalized level, they that may not be clear to them. Thanks, Darren. If you have any recommendations, we you know, certainly could adjust to reflect that. Okay. You know, I think Darren has a good point. And I don't know if it was just uh, in, maybe in the city contributions, explain that in uh, 2020, it moves it, you know, it, it now reflected as a lease payment, you know. I think we do have that in, in a lot of our, uh, you know, especially our audit that we do annually in our financial reporting, but, you know, certainly we can uh, uh, ensure that that's clear as we put that into both cities, city council's hands as they, as they look to approve our 2021 budget. We'd be yeah. happy to spell that out. You know, so I think the question is, what's the communication document? If it's the budget? It should be reflected here. We're going to have a lot more detail for the city councils as part of the, um, it'll be integrated into uh, the city's uh, traditional uh, budgetary process. So we can, we can certainly include that if, if you'd like. I'm just saying on this sheet, you know, under justification, um, you can explain that we've moved. Oh, from absolutely. That's, yeah. So it's an explanation of the, you know, I could see drawing, drawing lines connecting the two, but that, it, that's not an accountant's approach. So maybe, yeah, sure. maybe create a new line item. I mean, maybe that's part of what you were talking about, but just to highlight the fact that we're getting a non-aviation related revenue stream stood up. Right. And because it, it right now kind of gets lost in the general land lease, like other hangers and, you know, on airport traditional. Well, and I, and I think there's a message as well um, that the city contributions have changed and it's not just a, here's a lump sum payment. So that's another message that I think is, it would be worthy to, um, to sort of uh, think through. And one final comment, and it's um, stating the obvious, but uh, it seems like every meeting that I'm in uh, these days and every meeting that everybody, all of us are in is, um, you know, it's just amazing to see how disruptive and um, and the opportunities that have been created in the context of COVID. And so um, it's just, I, I literally have been in eight to 10 meetings today and every single meeting is so significantly impacted by this disease and by the opportunity. I don't want to just say it's you know, the impact is very positive in so many ways. And, and in the airport, I think we can say that, you know, there's been some negative hits and some, some, you know, downturn, some, some uh, lines that have decreased, but um, it's just amazing to me. Uh, so, so that's, that's stating the obvious, but I think it's worth acknowledging here, here at the airport as well. So thanks for your work on this, Jason and the team. I, I really, uh, really appreciate it. And and uh, look forward to more conversation. No, it's a good comment. Thank you. Other comments? Yes. Um, 
So a couple things just I can't I can't not say it because people wouldn't then not believe it but in the upper left hand side of this agreement we need to say 2021 airport budget instead of 2020 airport budget good point 2021 he, i'm just giving jason a hard time right now and then that's the second part of that is i think since our audit's done uh we should show our 2019 actuals in this document and and not include the the budget anymore so I would just to have us since the audit got accepted and adopted here a month and a half ago or so, Thanks we can now update that. ourselves. That that is the actual. Sorry, Steve. Thank you. Okay. So it's just a titling issue then. Yes, I'm sorry. No problem. That that. Well, you were reading my mind. Thank you. That 2020 was out there as the uh, to catch it and uh, and that's why yeah. we draft. So, so we're good. Now I'm looking at the logo and seeing if that's up to date, Steve, and the page numbers. Sean, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for that comment. No, it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. See, they, they give one to me. It's a tethered goat. They, 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 if I don't catch it, they won't, they won't uh, think I looked at it. So I'm just making sure. Thank you. Any other comments on the budget? So this is the comment and then Going to council, um, this would go in a normal fashion, right? After it's approved, it would then go to councils for subsequent approval, right? That's correct, Mr. Chair. It'll go through the same process uh, uh, in parallel with the rest of the budget. Thank you. And uh, I assume that Loveland and the city are kind of on the same time frame for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, very yep. good. Thank you. Uh, any other comments with related to the uh, uh, 2021 budget? <laughs> Thank you. So with that, uh, we are now at uh, business uh, from the members. Anything that anyone would like to bring up for the good of the whole? I would. Uh, yeah, please, Jared. If this would be a good time, I, I'd like to pick up on what you said earlier about what's going on in Cheyenne and how we might understand that better um, and see what, what near and present opportunities that might present that we could then turn around and leverage into long-term gains as well. Because I do remember clearly the conversation you and I had on the bus. Yeah. And, and then the other things that you also mentioned in terms of um, alternatives to just the airline model for transportation and how can we put ourselves in the center of that. So I'm wondering how do we challenge ourselves? How do we organize ourselves to go out and, and understand those opportunities and really try to land it at FNL? I like the way you set that up, Jerry. So I think um, there's a lot there. Um, and just, uh, I, um, I don't know if this is another s subcommittee or, you know, uh, one of the ways that our city council deals with things that are not currently on our agenda is we have a futures committee and to bring in and have conversations. So it makes it intentional in terms of conversations. Um, I'll just throw those out. Jason, do you have any thoughts or other commissioners just to keep the ball rolling? Mr. Chair, um, you know, there's always a, uh, an opportunity for, for you know, creating committees and, and those types of things or a task force even um, that, you know, could, could be, uh, convened that would you know be be looking at that I, I know our planning and development subcommittee has that as a as a task but uh, mm -hmm. you know we've been bogged down with more of the development uh, and planning or the planning rather than the development side of things uh, with the master plan and a lot of things that we've been working on with the cares act funding and in capital plans so um, you know certainly i think you know Jerry has a point that there is an opportunity i know that cheyenne has been very successful by having uh, um, you know, community-based uh, um, external party that uh, has been doing a lot of the advocating and, and fundraising through, um, you know, a lot of different avenues to kind of provide the financial support needed for those routes. You know, maybe um, uh, we can assign our sub, uh, the plan development subcommittee, maybe with Jason to come back with our recommendations or some thoughts um, to the commission on a identifiable line item to uh, to 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 then have a broader conversation at the commission. Is that an option? 
Jason. Look at it, Tom. Yeah, I think I think it is, um, and uh, you know, I'd be I'd be remiss if uh, if I didn't give Tom a second to you know provide some input as well. Um. Well, thank you, Jason and Mr. Chair. Uh, the thing I would say, if the focus here is meant to be on the the potential spillover from Cheyenne's uh, multi-billion dollar uh, planned uh, renovation of their missile silos and everything, a couple of points. First of all, we'll need to get some more information from uh, Cheyenne or the Air Force in that manner to find out exactly what's going to happen. Uh, wait a little while ago, you referred to uh, flights to uh, missile silos. The missile silos are remote. They are accessed by helicopter or land vehicle. There are no runways at the silos themselves. Uh, and I'm guessing that anything that goes to the silos would be brought in either by ground transportation or large air and then transported from wherever that plane lands to uh, various silos. There will also be some construction on Warren Air Force Base, which easily could spill over into our community because of the uh, availability of contractors and companies that do that sort of thing. But I think as far as our commission and the PDSC goes, the first step will be to get a better handle on exactly what is planned and when, and whether or not it could possibly be changed in a significant manner by the upcoming election and the potential for a new administration in uh, the White House next year. So that's just something to think about as we get a solid basis that uh, would allow us to examine the implications for uh, here at uh, Fort Collins and Flow. And uh, following up on that, um, Mr. Commissioner and Vice, Vice Chairman, Chairman. Uh, I wouldn't want it to in any way limit it to the Cheyenne opportunity. I would like to use that as an example of one. And, and I, would, I would wonder about having a separate entity and charter that's a real business development one, because I think planning and development subcommittee has always been and, and probably will continue to be very, very busy with the, the things that you see in the master plan, which are you know, related to the, the infrastructure and the build out of that infrastructure, not necessarily the recruiting of, of businesses and, and a business center here or a, a business support network for the businesses that we want to bring back to Don's point about how does this become an economic driver that helps bring other businesses to this area or support the businesses that are here. I think it's a, I think it's a big, um, I think it's a unique function with a lot of un, unfulfilled opportunity. And a lot of people are very busy doing, doing a lot of hard work in other areas. And I just think that's why this continues to be one of those things that would be nice to have versus traction action. Good point. Um, I heard something today um, in just a conversation uh, related to the Space Force and where the Space Force might be located. And right now the temporary aspect of, of that versus long-term and uh, uh, you know, I think it's easy to say Colorado Springs, but maybe not. Um, and uh, more diversification in the state. May, and what about tossing our hat in the ring in some way? Um, and uh, so I think to Jerry's point, um, you know, and, and, the, and, and, and the changes going on in the industry too, um, you know, something that has a stronger economic development focus. And I think it does suggest something that may not be in our current structure. And to Don, um, you know, economic development and, and, and maybe putting together a, um, a community focus to what does economic development mean around the airport and getting stakeholders involved, uh, which we have some involved with planned development, but around uh, economic development around the airport uh, in an intentional sense. So we don't need to figure it out now, but uh, I think, you know, I think we need to keep the conversation going. Any other comments? And, and, and Jason, let's, uh, let's, and Tom, let's keep it on uh, the list in some way such that um, we can uh, continually to uh, continue to uh, 
provide some framework to it as to what it means. But Tom, good, okay. Sounds good. Gary, thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, there's, a, there's a there there. Um, just don't know what it is and, and how it uh, manifests itself. So thank you. Other, um, other business from members? If not, thank you, everybody. Thank you for a good meeting. And uh, we'll see you uh, next month, if not before. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.